Uh, let's talk about let's talk about the the Disney news that you were talking about. We might as well go yeah, right into sure. it. Yeah, sure. There's this new animated Disney movie that just came out in theaters today. Actually, um, it's called Strange World. It's for kids, but technically all ages. And it seems that Disney has, uh, like you said, Brett, drawn their line in the sand with China. And with all of these other countries outside of the West that are not open to showing films with LGBT themes or characters in them. So they have not even uh, attempted getting approved for theatrical release in the following countries. Uh, China, Malaysia, Indonesia, Pakistan, Turkey, Vietnam, uh, all of East Africa, all of West Africa, the Maldives, Nepal, and Bangladesh. And they also have not submitted for theatrical release in Russia, but I thought that was that's for to, other uh, geopolitical reasons yeah. uh, compared to the rest of those countries Putin in that list. Putin torrents it and just loves the movie. And um, the last big theatrical release of an animated film for Disney was Encanto. It did really well. It made... I think $25 million from that list of 20 countries. Another bit of proof that people will accept any character of any of any racial demographic as long as you make an original character and you don't just change a bunch of stuff. Yeah, and don't just assume that foreign audiences are mm. xenophobic to the point where they won't watch a movie that doesn't reflect their own culture. It's only when you try to force these themes of, of LGBT relationships down their throats when their culture doesn't reflect that that it becomes a problem um so now disney is not even attempting to submit for theatrical release in these countries and uh this is coming off the heels of Lightyear, where they had this blink and you miss it same sex kiss scene towards the end of the movie same thing with wakanda forever they had this blink and you miss it that same even, sex not even kiss just like it was a suggestion yeah. it was a, that they were in a relationship it was a peck, peck on the, on the head. top of the yeah. head yes which by the way that actress uh michaela cole claimed was going to make waves in ghana i am gonna change the world change, yeah change their fundamental perceptions of of lgbt people <laughs> and change their legislation that discriminates against lgbt people absolute pipe dream delusions this is the these are the actors this is the other so, thing is these actors are activists and that's another yeah. reason why they're not movie stars is because they're more focused on how their work affects there's no dignity the and no nobility or artistic integrity notice in how that. tom cruise doesn't give a crap about what his movies do for the world he just wants yeah. to make stuff that he's not hustling to. any agenda he, on the side well, and you can tell so he's like he's like well he's like maybe i can get some of the scientology yeah, if, yeah, I, yeah. if i make this movie but he's sure, like but he's like cool airplanes Cool, yeah. uh, cool outfits, uh, aviators, and in a lot of masculinity, mm -hmm. and everyone's yeah. like, "Let's go!" And Disney's like, "Yeah, but how about gay?" So the main protagonist of Strange World, uh, which is, by the way, inspired from like Journey to the Center of the Earth or like King Kong, it's a mystery sci-fi themed movie. Um, the main protagonist is a sixteen-year-old boy who is gay. And they're claiming that they can't edit out the implications of his sexuality in the movie because it is so integral to the plot. And I can't imagine it's as important as they claim. But anyway, Disney has spoken to Deadline about this situation and said... In the countries where we operate, we seek to share our stories in their original form as we and the artists involved have created them. If we make edits because of legal or other considerations, they will be as narrow as possible. We will not make an edit where we believe it would impact the storytelling. In that circumstance, we will not distribute content, the content in that market. So they're saying this underage character's sexual orientation is so integral and irreplaceable to the storytelling and the plot of this movie that it is impossible logistically to edit it out strategically and make it acceptable for international markets. I I mean, I don't want to believe this, but <laughs> maybe if I watch it, I'll find that they are making a child's sexual orientation the focal point of a kid's movie. It, I wouldn't put it past them, but it's really kind of 
gross and sleazy, if you think about it, from that perspective. I'm not surprised at all. And I don't think that this is going to do numbers as well as Encanto did no, for this I, exact reason yeah. and others. But um, I, I know that even early screenings of Strange World have not performed as well as early screenings of, uh, I mean, like yesterday's earliest screenings of Strange World did not perform as well as Encanto's in a different, uh, they said like as the pandemic was at a different stage when Encanto came out. So people were even less likely to come out to the theaters back then in 2021 yeah. than they are now. So I think they made like 800,000 so far off of Strange World's earliest screenings yesterday when they made 1.5 million on the first screenings of Encanto. So already you're seeing underperformance there and there is a surprisingly low critic score for Strange World compared to other middling animated Disney films. Like I saw it compared to like on, on Rotten Tomatoes, which we know means nothing, but we're going to watch how it compares to the audience score. Strange World has 72% on the critic score and then uh, yet to be seen how it compares to audience. Ralph Breaks the Internet, a sequel to Wreck-It Ralph, got 88% from critics. And uh, Raya and the Last Dragon, which I, I don't think anyone watched, got 94% from critics. And Frozen 2 got 77% from critics. They're very forgiving with these mediocre animated Disney films for kids. And yet... Still, Strange World's score is the lowest on that list. So this is where I, I point out that Chapek was not um, anti-woke. He, he was fine with it. He just had no clue how to actually stand up for himself. Who insinuated he was anti-woke? Uh, there was people who were saying that because of his... Like, um, <laughs> we, we saw these tweets from people on the right who said that Chapek's firing was not primarily a financial decision. It was a rebuke of woke leadership. Yes. Um, the, the but then other people were saying that Chapek didn't stand up for his LGBT employees and he, he was anti-gay all along. I think he pointed out the best part is he was reactionary yeah. and he did not uh, understand that the navigating the world of, of cultural identity politics as it pertains to business is a landmine that is... Somebody, okay, the other day, somebody pointed out a tweet from the NHL that said... Uh, Trans men are men, trans women are women, and non-binary is real. And the first response is just like, what the f does that have to do with hockey? Like, it is a right. world now. And, and we are we in a world that is run by HR departments. Mm -hmm. the, the president of FIFA coming out and saying to the world in an hour-long monologue, I feel gay. I feel disabled today. I feel like a migrant worker. Like... It's absolutely maddening to watch this happen. But I, I wanted to read some tweets about Strange World, specifically because there are other reasons than just wokeness that this is going to do badly, in my opinion. The art is hideous. The way that they're designing characters these days is like just visually abhorrent. This one tweet said, time to be blunt. I think the human designs in Strange World look hideous. I have no clue what it is specifically, but they look so uncanny when compared to previous CG Disney's. Maybe it's the eyes. And if you look at their eyes, it's just like completely soulless. When the point of animation is supposed to exaggerate that Well, expression. especially around the eyes. That's in why the eyes, Lion yeah. King works um, um, so well. We also saw this tweet thing. that said Disney is on its 19th first openly gay character. Mm -hmm. Another one said, congratulations to Strange World for having the first gay Disney character since Lightyear had the first gay Disney character since the Owl House had the first gay Disney character since Onward had the first gay Disney character since Beauty and the Beast 2017 had the first gay Disney character. I'm very et cetera, sick et cetera, of fake records. I'm so sick of fake records and fake yeah. firsts. We And we're going to get Finally. that literally forever. Where it's a also remember the end goal of every character is to end up gay uh, in, in these. I, I mean, no disrespect to anyone, but that's what it is now. It's like we finally have this, we finally have that. And that's because the, they believe that the end goal for all of it is to worship at the altar of identity, which to me is particularly disgusting because I find it to be your sexual identity, your racial makeup. 
whatever uh, your immutable characteristics are, to me, they're the least interesting part of the people I know. Who you are as a person, how you behave, um, how you treat other people, the things you've worked uh, to accomplish in your life, the things you failed at, the things you've succeeded at. That's what makes you who you are. And those are the things that you're supposed to focus on when you make these stories. The other stuff at the at best should be supplemental and incidental to the story itself that's used to put the cherry on top of a of a fully yeah. prepared three course meal that's the context that's, that's context. yes yeah. so yeah. W when they do this it's very surface level but it's surface level in a way that would be annoying even if there wasn't a mass agenda behind it but there is yeah. I think it's more than just the impoverishment of storytelling that we need to call out here. It's that this movie is particularly targeted at children. They are watching a, a big kid on screen yeah. whose, uh, quote, queerness is integral to his personal character. And there's just no hiding it anymore that they're going out of their way to push this on kids, mm -hmm. no matter whether it's a blink and you miss it moment or if it's integral to the story in any capacity it's something that a boardroom sat around and talked about yeah. it's always intentional and that's why it is not analogous to a character in any animated disney film having a love interest that is heterosexual because that doesn't imply the same intentionality yeah we know it like i, I just am tired of denying it and now we're seeing Candace Cameron Burr getting absolutely Bure. dragged on the internet. Well, everyone says Burr, so I'm going to say Burr. Bure. Bure. Um, it's like it sounds too much like baby food. <laughs> Candace, Cameron, uh, Candace Cameron Burr getting dragged on the internet for saying that she wants to make movies focus that are family friendly that are focused on traditional marriage and not same-sex couples for the time being that's yeah. such a small ask and she is just being like dragged through through the mud for this and yet when disney tokenizes lgbt characters specifically targeted for children we are not supposed to bat an eye yep that's uh, the the number one thing for me is like I'm I'm as uh, I, I consider myself to be fairly socially liberal, but I say leave kids out of all of it. You know, it, it, leave kids alone. That's the like, that and that to me doesn't feel like a large ask, right? Like give these kids time to grow up without any type of socio political agenda or ideology behind the way you market to them. I understand that writers today write what they know. And if they're hiring writers based on identity, that these are the stories that you're going to get. But there's also such a thing as uh, as story editors. And that's the other thing, is when you come from a protected, uh, what they consider protected classes, now this is a big problem in comics, is like you can't, you can't tell them their story's bad because then you're a bigot, right? So these stories don't get the rewrites they need because even if even if they do, even if there is the, the best story editor in the world in that room, he's going to think twice about saying maybe this isn't important because of the label that that will garner him on Twitter after the movie comes out and it doesn't do as well as it was. Chris as, Carr would never do that. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, yes. said the best yeah. story editor yeah. in the world. <laughs> so Chris Carr would never he would, he would He would make those changes anyways. <laughs> when, when that movie comes out and it doesn't do well, and because we know that these creatives don't know how to take responsibility for their own failures, that's a big reason why yesterday we talked about Ben Affleck starting his uh, artist, artist Equity, right? Mm -hmm. Mary? It's uh, artist's equity, but there's a union called Actors Equity that we confused a, it with yesterday. A profit-driven production company that would incentivize people to make things that everyone likes. Now, if there is no profit-driven motive for these creators because they're not getting deals on the back end, and all they care about is, is pushing forward their own ideology based on Whatever their upbringing was, fine. But that's, uh, whether you like it or not, there is ideological means pressed into that story because of the way you evolved as a person. There is no incentive for the story editor to change anything because he's going to get labeled. There's no incentive for the actual writer to do it better because he's not making any money on the back end anyways. And the agenda is more important. This is what happens when you hire activists instead of actual artists. And Disney might be the worst defender out of all of them. Uh, it's only it's only getting worse. It's, it's only going downhill. And I, I I would caution. I think uh, Dane said the other day. He's like, I think we're we're coming out of wokeness. I said, well, first of all, I said when Donald Trump uh, announced that he's running for president again, I said you just 
you just sentenced us to 12 more years of this garbage because they're going to they're going to make it even worse because it's still Trump America. Mm -hmm. So as long as that is a thing and as long as we're combating each other in an extremely polarized climate, the art will reflect the mindset of the people in charge and the mindset of the people in charge is insane mm -hmm. and oftentimes extremely extremely not mentally ill but uh, one-sided. Mm -hmm. As long as Disney is operating at a like two billion dollar loss and they continue churning out yeah. this ideological garbage. Well, I appreciate the hope in what Dane said, but we're never coming it's, out of both no, this. We're not. No, it's this is the end. Uh, maybe maybe we're wrong, but this no, no, feels no, 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 like no. The, the end point socially because you do society doesn't change this quickly. And in a such no. an in, in the the best argument you could be could make is that everyone knows it's fake. Like you read all these articles about people who talk about like they say this, but they say it just to get ahead. But as long as your persona is fake via social media, this never goes away mm -hmm. because you're always on trial. The only way that like the things that we talk about or more, I guess it, yeah, I say we, but like the traditional values or even that. And that's a inappropriate and blanket term. The only way that those things come back is through necessity. Yeah. And we are so, uh, we made a joke earlier about like Western woman, uh, life so hard because she has to carry a laptop upstairs. As long yeah, as we have it's, that, it's rough. As long as Poor we have me. that, no, as long as we have that lifestyle, this type, you, we are so hungry for a struggle that we will substitute real struggle with, with manufactured struggle. Yep. Yeah. And the only way out of the only way that the things that are valuable again, or that truly are valuable become valuable again is when they are necessity like the uh uh they try to make a joke out of it even in in, in glass onion the um duke cody his whole opening monologue on youtube or twitch or whatever is like it's lampooning the idea that there is a social order yeah and hierarchy but there is like mm -hmm. just because you say something in a funny voice doesn't make it not true if i say like oh you jump off a bridge you'll die <laughs> yeah you will so don't do it you know mm -hmm. but the saying like oh men and women are different yeah, they are. It doesn't yeah. matter what tone of voice you say it in. It's true. But the only way that something like that becomes important again is when you do not have a society that is so profitable and rich that it can uh, uphold other people's uh, convenient way of life. People in the chat are, are, are making fun of the term back-end money. <laughs> just, just pointing out, uh, uh, we like to guys. laugh. We like to laugh here, guys. We like to laugh here. Uh Maybe I also tend to be a pessimist when it comes to these things. So when, when I say that I don't see it getting better, I say that because I don't see what it evolves past to. I don't see. Well, okay. Maybe an idea or multiple ideas that are like artists' equity, a push for meritocracy and profitability in the film industry can start to change the tides. Because I just, I already see it coming. It's so predictable that when Strange World inevitably flops at the box office, they are going to blame it on the audience because there's an openly gay character, when in reality, it's going to flop because they failed at marketing it and because they artificially inserted this ideology into Why? the movie. But both could be true. It's the same thing for bros. Like, mm -hmm. it's always the, the fallback is blame the audience. I think that if we see a push for meritocracy in Hollywood, then... That's the start of. They don't even blame the audience, though. They blame trolls. You know what I mean? It's this is I mean, what that's the, still the this audience. Is what, no, 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 no. They say this is what people actually want. People want to see bros. They want to see this, but it's they were. But where misled. are the numbers proving it? No, no. It? They, they were the misled proof? because trolls review bombed it and said it's bad. So that's why they didn't see it. So maybe it digital manipulation. Yeah. Then and, the idea is to get away from these from these large company structures that force this type of homogeneity into these stories, right? Uh, then you need a million of the artist equity, uh, or you need twenty artist equities making these stories and not one Disney, mm -hmm. one Warner Brothers, one Universal, and all you get is Universal making the Fast and the Furious. Thank goodness for that, right? Yeah. No. Uh, and then and then you get Disney with their garbage and Warner Brothers with their uh, extremely running around with their ch like a chicken with their heads cut off, not knowing what they're doing. At least they fail by just making bad stories. Yeah. Like most of the like most of the time when DC movies fail, at least it's not because uh, of uh, wokeness. It's just 
not good. I <laughs> the, I actually have a strange perverse appreciation for just wow that was just a bad movie. <laughs> okay, like our, he tried. At least he tried. Mm-hmm. At least he didn't insert a bunch of garbage that was there because uh, uh, mommy and daddy didn't hug him enough growing <laughs> up. It, it, he, he's like that. Because, Morbius. Uh, it's Marvel, but yes. but just a bad movie. That's so yeah. true. Yeah. Like it's, it's like I'm okay with a movie just being bad. Yeah. Totally like, forgot Morbius existed. Yeah. By the way, Morbid that time. happened. Yeah. Like uh, the re-release I, happened. Yeah. So yeah, well that that was just them not being able to read the room in the market. Jared Leto made his comeback in Glass Onion, though yeah. for sure with that that kombucha shout outs. I hope that that kombucha is real. So this movie, and like I said, this movie will fail, and then they will the like Lightyear failed, like Bros failed, like all of these movies failed, and we will just end up back at square one where uh, they start using. The, to be fair, they didn't use the 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 rage bait marketing strategy for this no but i believe that when they see the numbers flopping it's gonna start getting pushed the the anger from the people involved in this movie is gonna come out for sure thanks for watching this clip guys if you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media links are in the description below Bye. bye